Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Um, Job 1 is what I'm going to be discussing because I believe that there's some misunderstood information concerning the accuser of the brethren and why it happens. It's two reasons. It could be the process that you're in or it could be because you had not aligned your life specifically to what God is giving you to do. And um, there is no accusation in the earth that can actually take fulfillment in our lives when we're covered by God. But the the covering is not conclusive if we're not steadfastly in the will of God. So that means that if you're in the will of God, then you're practicing daily spiritual practices that have to do with um, the scriptures, right? And that means that you are actually coming into a place where your mind and your heart are transforming. The mind and heart has to transform in order for the soul to um, change. Because we came here to do soul work. The soul is the number one factor in kingdom building. So until we can get the soul reacclimated um, in unity with God, then there's like a separation there. So many people think because they've come to Christ and um, they begin to quote scriptures that they're in unison with God, but the deeper part is within us, the soul. You know, um, beloved, I would in John, um, he says, I would that you would prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. If you look at even as, it is a, a paramount thing because, beloved, I would that you would be in good health. You can't be in good health without the soul prospering, without the soul attention, because that's where your healing is going to come from. That's where the unity of um, you and your father is at. So here I want to just go into Job because when um, judgment comes, and some people don't know that judgment is here in the earth. It's when we're being brought before spiritual councils to say, did you do what you needed to do? Or are you still, um, you know, walking in your own will? And um, that council will have a determination after time. It's like us in school, the test um, and the testing. Uh, that means that while you're being tested, you're actually... Um, in the testing for your promotion spiritually. So everything about the Bible is spiritual. I know some people say, I know that. And some people are saying that I don't. Well, let's get it clear. If every day was used for us to um, work our lives according to the spiritual climate, we probably would get better results. But because we're in between um, the spirit and here in the earth, we're influenced by both and it can be confusing. So God has mercy. But here, um, Job, I'm going to start at one and four. Everyone that listens, they could go back and read. Well, Job had sons and daughters. Also, his possessions were 7,000 sheep, 3,000 uh, camels, 500 yokes, um, uh, female donkeys, and so on. So he had all these material things. And his sons... Uh, would go and feast in their houses each on his appointed day. And they would send in, invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. So it was with the days of feasting um, had run their course that Job would send and sanctify them. And he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed in the hearts in their hearts. Thus Job did regularly. So Job may have spoke something actually into existence because he was doing um, and had taught his children according to uh, the order of God. But every every time he went up to pray to God, he would say, I'm doing this if my kids have sinned and cursed. And he did not affirm that my family is healthy, wealthy, and prosperous. He was thinking in a worry context, let's just say that. And so um, he did it regularly. He would go before God and say, my son, if it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed. And so that may be is a sign of worry. Like you do not know or understand what you're doing or what 
um, your family is doing. With God, you have to be precise because God will begin to uh, manifest according to what you are saying because of the power in our words. Okay, so uh, it goes on in six and it says, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, from where did you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? And there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and shuns him. Now, two things that I saw here, and it's up for discussion because I studied this years ago, is the fact that Job was speaking in a context of concern if they did sin and if they didn't. Some people would say, well, I'm just praying to cover their um, whatever they're doing out of my sight. But if we speak to God and we speak through our hearts, in love, then we can declare the orders and the steps of our children, just like we have the scriptures on order my steps in the Lord. Well, order my steps, that means that I order their day as well as mine, because if I'm the head, then I speak words of the head. I don't speak words of, of worry. I don't even think them. Why? Because if I do, it's taken into consideration that I may not really believe that they might be doing according to what I taught them on the Christian uh, biblical level, right? So that's just for food, food for thought. So anyway, um, here, Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear God for nothing? Question. Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? There it is right there. Satan is saying he has been talking to you about his children. If his children are doing the right thing, if not, you know, I'm praying and I'm feasting and I'm doing this fast to offer up alms for my children in case they are out of order. So Satan reminds Father God, um, does Job fear God for nothing? Question mark. And so he's questioning God and saying, well, does he have any kind of fears? Because fear is what opens up the door for satanic um, um, attacks, for um, those things of the enemy to come in or to be open. That means that if we don't close our heart to worry, jealousy, envy, and strife, we're open to satanic plots and plans because we have not fully cleaned the heart. And this is a cleaning that takes place between our devotion on a spiritual level with God. You know, this is what Jesus has taught us in the New Testament. But this here is where Satan is calling uh, Job out according to what he's done and what not did he believe you concerning your hedge of protection around the family? And have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? Uh, question mark. You have blessed the work of his hands. Satan is speaking on his behalf. He's telling him what he did, but he questioned him about things that Job may have been concerned and worried about. Again, we got to keep that in mind because a lot of people are teaching according to the fact that Job was an honorable man, but it's just not honorable to God. If we doubt or fear, it opens the door for satanic because that's a part of us that hadn't been cleared. It hadn't been uh, changed. We cannot fear. There's no wavering in God. Okay. So here we go on and it says, you have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land, but now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will surely, and he will surely curse you to your face. So this is the test for Job. We already know because we read, right? The test is coming now because there's doors that have been opened. Close those doors of anger, hate, and bitterness. Close those doors to doubt, jealousy, worry envy and strife and close them because those are the reasons that we continue to have these attacks. It's like God is saying, okay, I have allowed it because did you recognize your thought process or your heart? Don't you understand that love conquers all? 
If you love, you can love your way out of doubt. You can love your way out of the process. You got to go through, especially if if God has given you anointing to to do something. There's going to be a process, you know, and loving our way through the process. Thank you. Thank you. And worship is the way through it. How do I know? Because I've been through it seemed like I went through a job experience, but I declare and decree at this point in my life that God has given me all. Absolutely. My will is uh, in God and it is God's will. I'm inheriting the kingdom of God. Okay. So go on. And um, it says, so Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. How about that? Now, 13, there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And a messenger came to Job and said the oxen were plowing and donkeys feeding beside them when the Sabaeans raided them and took them away. Indeed, they have killed the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Okay, so this is where it all begins. And so now the family is under um, pressure. There's killing going on. Um, the process has started for Job to evolve in another level. Uh, material things are being lost and um, the children are being lost in um, this kind of thing. And a lot of people will get upset, but they won't understand that when you love God, you love him no matter what. Whatever your journey is in this life, you're here to um, make some changes and decisions. And my thing um, that I present to people is without a family, there is no kingdom. And without a kingdom, there is no family. So where do we begin to restructure? And where do we begin to uh, believe in God for that which he said he would do? Um, Adam and Eve were a man and a woman, and they were here to till and to or to take care of a garden. That means like the area of their housing that God had given them. And it was a unified component. So when we look at this here, uh, there was fear and worry. But the, the for Job concerning his family, again, read the, the text yourself, Job 1. Um, and then compare it to the family with um Adam and Eve and knowing that the kingdom structure, it has to be amongst mothers and fathers, because if not, there, there will be a single pressure on the family. That means that scattering can happen because one can't really do the job effectively for kingdom building. There's a representation that God is looking for in kingdom building. So throughout Job, um, the book of Job, he's losing things. And not only is he losing things, he's losing family members. I hadn't brought that text up, but I'm just um, ad living. One of the things that stood out to me, though, and that was not only did Satan bring him before God's court and say questions to God concerning what he had done for Job, did not put a hedge of protection around the family, but he's still praying about it. So he has concern. Then there is Job's friends. Because he's now experiencing loss. So everybody will be for you when you have something. But people will begin to judge you when you're walking through. This here reminds me of situations that I've been in. But it was okay because God established himself as my friend. As my guide. As my lead. As my head. So when you are in a place of process, you can't do anything but seemingly lose things. And I say seeming because everything that is taken away, if you're walking according to the will, the will of God, the inheritance will come to you. The inheritance will come. Why? Because that is the order of the book. That's what it says in the text. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So Job may have been in a place where he was being um, evaluated to go to the next level. Um, new beginnings were coming. 
So the old had to go and the new man must come. It doesn't say that we're going to go through a process one time or two times. As long as we're here, we're here to work out soul salvation, right? So the next thing is I brought up is the accuser of the brethren. The brothers that were his friends, or if you're a woman, your, your, your sister, you know, your sisterins, you will know the faith of your sisters and brothers when you start going through challenges. And mind you, that is something that God wants us to look at because if the kingdom is coming, we can't be in the same place that we have been. Whether they believe us or not, we have to look to the hills from which cometh our help, right? Not to mention that when Jesus was, you know, training the disciples, he said that who of you will uh, deny yourselves and take up the cross? That the cross is about Christianity because the cross crosses out the error in us. When many people are saying they did this and they did that, we're not looking at what we have done. And in that case, what we've done before we chose Christ will come up for evaluation because there is the redemption. You cannot get the redemption without looking at what was done in the past. We have to learn that it is not okay to lie on people. And you go to Deuteronomy 5, your commandment in and, 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 and Deuteronomy 5, it tells you what God requires of you. This is your covenant agreement. If you can agree to Deuteronomy 5, then we're all okay. Our relationship with God is more important than anything in the world. So as I align, you and I align, and we see that even when the accuser of the brother and friends that have been around that have talked about us because we're going through a hard time in life or um, a pressuring time to refine us, I should say, we will understand that they may not be in the place that we're in. We can keep on walking as Job did and receive the restoration. He did not blame God or speak out. They say, according to the scripture, uh, concerning the conditions of loss, he, you know, he lost his family. How many out there have lost their family or they're not in connection with them? And so many people have given up on that um, unity uh, or the fact that it can come together. God can do anything. God is the possibility in the situations when we cannot. But one of the things that we can always do is stand fast in the word. Your, your word and your, your belief system, your thought process, it can't be unwavering because a presentation of something you didn't know about was coming. You got to hold on to the presentation of what God is giving you. And that's what I saw in Job. So at the end of Job, what happened? He was restored. Then all the accusers, those that mocked and talked, had to come back and see. He even had to pray for them, God told him. But the thing about it is, is that you're standing in the word. This here has to become who you are at this point in life. That means that if you are worried, if you are jealous, you've spoken against your brothers and sisters, guess what? Those very words that you spoke against a child of God, you're going to have to go back and look at them. Why? Because until the court, the hierarchy, finds that there is a judgment to be made, there is no judgment. I mean, in that I'm saying, in the Christian sect, brothers and sisters, let's get more love going and stop blaming each other. How do you do that? You mind your own business. You support each other. You know, the song goes, I need you, you need me. This is a fact. We're all in this here world together. We want to get out of the world. Uh, that mindset to accuse your brother and sister and say you did something wrong because you're not doing this and you're not doing that is a mind of the enemy. Not to mention in James, a double minded because you loved me when I had everything. But now you, you don't want to have anything to do with me because I'm walking through a time of process and refining. All of us have to go through it because the kingdom of God in light it requires change. Amen. So what is the solution? The solution is this. And what I find is, is that we get tired. 
speak against being tired because some of it can be uh, energy attached to us from the atmosphere. The accuser is in the air. Ephesians 2 and 2. Read it. That means that your air needs to, in your house, outside, we need to pray because the energy of the accuser, dark forces, is all around. This is not our world. We come from the heavenlies. That means that we have to pray. Thy kingdom come in earth. Thy will be done. Why? Because this was never our place. We came here because we have to do some changes. Our soul is required to make some changes. That's not in others. It's in us first. So I wanted to explain the accuser of the brethren to make it very clear. It can be your friends. It can be you. It can be me. Because at some time in our walk in life, we were not always speaking rightly so about our brothers and sisters and about our neighbors. We didn't even feel love for them. So if we get a heart of love, and that is through the word, because, you know, the word says that love kills a multitude of sin. It will kill the anger, the judgment, the jealousy that we have towards each other. Unfortunately, I don't understand. Um, it will change the mind of confusion, making choices according to the will of God. Um, the mind and the heart will change so that we can actually walk in the order of God, the mind of Christ. You know, you call on that and all will be well. It is a process. That means that it just doesn't stop in two days or three days. It's something that's strengthening us. It's making us better if we look at the lesson for what it's worth. Like Job, he didn't give up on God. You can see throughout the uh, chapter that he went through some uh, perilous times, but he came out. And that is the key. Do you see your expected end or do you just see what you're going through today? Because you got to see heavenly rather than earthly. And this is the power that God has given us. He said he give us the power to tread down the lion, adder, and serpent. And that power will start within the mind and heart because we got to see other than what we're walking through naturally. All right. So you guys let me know what you think. Um, that accuser of the brethren and the brothers accusing people, we got to come together. I need you. You need me. And then that energy of dark forces will begin to dissipate. All right. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed. Amen.